It's definitely a roller coaster ride when it comes to Social Security. On one hand, we're hearing talks about increased payments for Social Security beneficiaries. On the other hand, we're hearing cuts as well as delayed July payments for Social Security recipients. So what's going on here is that Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen just reaffirmed yesterday that June 1st is the deadline that if the debt ceiling agreement is not made by then, the U.S. defaults and Social Security payments in July could be delayed along with Medicare, along with federal employee salaries, which includes the military. So a lot of problems there. I'll give you the update. But on the positive side of Social Security, President Biden has made four new proposals that could change Social Security benefits for the positive. I'll let you know what those proposals are, as well as how Social Security beneficiaries could get an extra $56 per month. I'll give you the math, show you all how that all works. Give you the truth of what's going on with Social Security. Usually when asked if you want the bad news or good news first, I always ask for the bad news. So let's just go with that first. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen reaffirms the U.S. could run out of money to pay bills by early June. So June 1st remains the earliest date that the United States could default on its debt, according to Janet Yellen, uh, who said that yesterday on Monday. And the guidance came as White House and congressional leaders prepare to meet Tuesday today to continue negotiations. In recent days, conflicting reports have emerged about whether negotiators are making progress. So what is the progress? Well, uh, President Biden and Kevin McCarthy met last Tuesday, about a week ago, or exactly a week ago, and Kevin McCarthy said that the progress made was that they actually sat down and met with each other. They're supposed to meet again on Friday. That meeting fell through and did not happen. So debt ceiling talks resume between Biden and top congressional leaders, which is today. Uh, so supposedly they're supposed to meet today, but who knows, they could delay it again. Now, Biden is optimistic about a debt limit deal, but McCarthy says White House isn't being serious. President Joe Biden said he thinks the White House and congressional leaders can hammer out a deal to raise debt ceiling, while House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, however, said he thinks the sides are still far apart. The remarks came ahead of a Tuesday meeting, uh, as they are supposed to all meet today. Uh, we'll see what happens. President Biden said this, I think there's really a desire, or I think I really think there's a desire on their part, as well as ours, to reach an agreement and I think we'll be able to do it. I remain optimistic because I'm a con uh, con congenital optimist. So when it comes to the meeting and how it affects all Americans, because even if you're not on Social Security, you have a 401k plan, a lot of these uh, things that they're talking about at the meeting matters to every single American. There's a domino effect. It could affect the entire economy. If we thought the economy was bad for the past couple of years, it could get a lot worse if the U.S. defaults. Now, why is this becoming such a public crisis? Why couldn't they just figure this out behind private doors? Instead, it's made of such a spectacle. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Hopefully you can answer that. Let me know down in the comments below. It just seems like unnecessary drama. Why not figure out this debt ceiling thing and allow Social Security payments to not be delayed for July, especially for our most vulnerable of our society. It's not just Social Security recipients. It's SSDI, SSI, veterans, our military. Millions of people are affected by this. Now, Social Security... COLA to drop significantly in 2024, according to Senior Group. I want to give you the exact math because we're hearing a lot of different numbers. I mentioned uh, some numbers yesterday from articles, but I want to show you the exact math. So if we look at this right here, average Social Security payment, it looks like for February of 2023, it was $1,693.88. There's different numbers in different places, but we're going to go with the top Google results result right here. So I'm going to pull out my calculator. Uh, so if we go to, uh, let's type in uh, 1694. So that's the monthly payment. Of course, yours may be higher or lower, but this is the average. We're going to multiply it by the new predicted COLA amount, which is 3.1%. So we're going to multiply by 0.031, that's 3.1%, and it comes out to $52 per month. So that could be the amount that you're getting 
extra, uh, depending on your case, per month. Uh, let me know down in the comments below, what are you getting now per month? How do you see the cola change being for you? Uh, now, if we multiply that by uh, 12, 630 is what we could see for the uh, for the year, what you could expect. Well, for the average person, but that's how much. A lot less than what it was with the 8%, 8.7% increase for cola. So $630 compared to, I think it was over $1,000 uh, with with the cola of last year. Let me know, is this cola enough? Are you happy that there is an increase of any sort? Let me know down in the comments below, but I just wanted to give you the truth and the math and show you how the numbers work there. Just multiply your current payment by 0 0.031. You could take out your phone right now and do that and get a good idea of the monthly payments. Uh, so also, four social security changes Joe Biden wants to make and the one insurmountable problem he'll encounter. So let's get jump right to these proposals, let you know what's going on. So one, increase payroll taxation on high earnings. Basically, anyone who is making a higher than a hundred, or so basically people who make 160 160,000 is subject to a 12.4% payroll tax. Now he wants to uh, he wants to reintroduce a 12.4% payroll tax on income earned above $400,000. So that's what he wants to do: tax high earners there, and then switch the program's inflationary measure from the CPIW to the CPIE. Basically, the CPIW is for uh, the, basically, the difference is you have the CPI, which is for workers who are working now, and then you have the CPIE, which is for elderly who are retired, who those two groups live completely different lives. If you're working, you're, you have money coming in, you could have more money coming in for months and months. If you're on fixed income, you're elderly, re relying on social security, then your lifestyle is a lot different and you're gonna be spending a lot less. So with this adjustment means that the COLA will correctly be uh, adjusted in order to give you a higher payment on social security so that you don't have a lower payment, which is what the calculations are on for the working class, not the elderly class. And then three, gradually increase the primary insurance amount for aged beneficiaries. So, um, what it's saying here is to counter the likelihood of late in life expenses sapping the financial stability of aging Americans, Biden has proposed gradually increasing the primary insurance amounts. According to the proposal, the PIA would increase by 1% annually beginning at the age 78 and continuing through 82. This works out to a 5% aggregate increase in the PIA for age beneficiaries, which would help to offset rising costs. And then number four, boost the special minimum benefit. The fourth and final social security change proposed by Joe Biden is to increase the special minimum be uh, minimum paid to lifetime low earning workers. In 2023, a lifetime low earning worker with 30 years of coverage would max out with a benefit check of $1,033 per month or $12,400 annually. For context, the federal poverty level for a single filer in 2023 is $14,580. Biden's plan would boost the special minimum benefit to 125% of the federal poverty level for a single filer 2023. It would raise their monthly maximum payment from $1,033 to $518. So that's an additional around eight of uh, around five hundred dollars extra that someone would get for being a low earn a lifetime low earning worker. So a lot of these plans help to keep Social Security uh, from becoming insolvent as well as boost payments higher and with systems in place to make sure that it doesn't get any lower. So with these four proposals, let me know your thoughts on this. Are these good proposals by President Biden? Uh, not good proposals. In terms of this actually happening and getting done, it really all depends on this debt ceiling. I think what this is taking up a lot of bandwidth, a lot of time, 
of lawmakers. And once this is done and out of the way, then we could focus on other things like helping and improving social security, boosting payments, increasing payments for social security. So I'll keep you updated on everything social security. If you appreciate how I got straight to the point, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more daily social security updates. And to hopefully cheer you up a bit, here is my daughter Bella's tip of the day. Hi guys, this is Bell's Tip of the Day, and what I want to tell you is always stay happy. Always be glad for your family, because your family is the ones who made you and, and made you. So, everybody, hope you have a good July 4th. Bye! Now? Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate all of your support. So I'm trying out this new thing and not feeling the best of it. So it's something called the carnivore diet. Uh, something to where basically I'm just having meat, salt, and water. I've been on this for, I think this is day five or six. Day five. And uh, hopefully, not trying to lose weight or anything, but just trying to get rid of allergies. And I heard that this helps. So day five, um, it's not fun. I don't really like it much, but I'm hoping that I see the benefits soon. I'll keep you posted on that as well. If you want to check out any of my other videos, click right up here, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, be safe. Thank you for watching.